Welcome back. In this episode, we landscape this disused corner of our yard and do some curved edging with this treated pine, which apparently is quite easy to bend. Trust me, it's going to work. Come along and I'll show you how. Now just a bit of background, we're on half an acre here, it's a corner block and there's quite a lot of land to try to landscape all in one go. So what we've been doing is slowly chipping off areas as we've been working around the house and we're now up to this stage which is the rear of the house working up to the back side area. So naturally I'm a bit of a straight edge kind of person, I like things to be nice, straight, perpendicular and neat. But what we've done with this property is I've learned to embrace my inner curve. So what you'll find is we've got a lot of organic landscape borders that flow and connect spaces within our lawn. And it's worked incredibly well. Now, when it comes to garden edging, you have a lot of different types you can choose from. You have brick edges. You could do a formed concrete edge. You have your metal edging. You have PVC edging. And then you also have treaded pine as well. Now we've got meters and meters and meters of garden edging that we need to do around the property. So we needed to find something that was quite economical and easy to use. Now I have my heart set on using an aluminium system. It's nice and fine and you can curve it and get into real tight profiles. But on a property of this size, it just became uneconomical for us to do so. So what we've ended up using are 4.8 lengths of 100 by 25 tree to pine timber. Now it's fairly cheap and economical. You can curve it and generally it works quite well. Being tree to pine, it will last for a fair amount of time. Eventually it will rot and break down, but we've found it's quite successful, particularly with some of these organic shapes we're doing. The key is getting the largest length you can. In our case, it was 4.8 meters and you can actually curve that and, and flex it a fair way, which I'll show you shortly. When it comes to curve edging, I started off trying to draw it up on the computer, but you'll find you generally exceed the maximum deflection you can get out of each strip. We then moved on to marking it out on the ground using marking paint, and that works pretty well. But I think what I found is that particularly where you get the joints between the timbers, you have to modify and manipulate that so that, that it flows quite nicely. So what I've started doing is I'll put a peg at one end, I'll put a peg somewhere where I think I want it to land through the center of the curve, and you just keep manipulating it from side to side so you can get it to curve and bend, firstly without snapping, and secondly, so that the joints line up and are all nice instead of being jagged and, and, and quite obvious where they are. Now we use simple 50 by 25 mil stakes. Generally these work quite well. You can get them down far enough so that you can fix onto the top of them. The tops aren't exposed, you can just run a little bit of mulch over the top of them and that works out quite well with your tree to pine edging screws. Now where it comes to joints, where the edging is under quite a lot of stress, I find the 25 mil thick stakes aren't quite strong enough to hold the screws in place. So in there, I use a 50 by 50 stake, 
It's a lot harder to punch into the ground, but it's got enough meat that the screw can fix into without pulling out at a later date. Now, when it comes to the edging, you'll notice to start off with, we have it sitting on top of the lawn. That's so we can get the shape in a rough sort of location, get the stakes in. And then what we do is we come along and cut the turf, if there's turf in place, or dig a channel to bury this edging down into the ground. The idea with that is you can run your garden mulch up to one side, have your lawn on the other side, you've got a nice mowing edge that you can whip a snip up to, and in our case we can run the ride on over the top as well. If you've got it sitting up and your lawn down here, that's not too bad either, but again you've just got more of an edge that in our case it's harder to mow along, and it looks a lot neater if you just have this nice neat little 25mm profile that separates your landscaping types of one side to another. So what we'll do now is I'll show you how we've roughly set up this edge for this intended purpose and show you how I go about manipulating it to get it working properly, which may help you out in your next landscaping project. So here's a good example of where I've been playing around trying to get the, the edge in a nice flowing sort of profile. Started off with a peg here, I moved to a peg over here and I've ended up with a third peg, which sort of works with how it flows around to the fence on one side and links up with how we're trying to flow around the existing garden beds on the other side. Now, the reason that you move this backwards and forwards is again, just so you get a nice flowing curve, but it's also how it interfaces with the join on the other side. What I'll do is I'll unclamp this now and I'll move it side to side and you can sort of see at the, the joint where it, where it meets will change as you move this piece in and out. So it's coming up with a bit of a balance on deflecting this backwards and forwards and looking to see how it joins at either end as well so that you don't end up with any awkward junctions and it looks like it flows all nicely when it goes through. Don't be worried too much about it because if you sink it down into the ground and you do, as I described, run turf into one side, mulch in the other, you're not really going to read it that much. Certainly not as much as what you do when it's raised out of the ground like this. But I think it's good to get it as good as you possibly can and looking right. So when you bury it, it looks all nice and it flows from one end to the other. So here's a junction of the two boards. We've got this one set in place. And here you can see just by deflecting the board a little bit more, we can get a nice flowing edge rather than a bit of an awkward junction through here if you don't have the curve through the middle of the board right. So always look back, make sure that you're lining these sections up as well as you can so all your joints when you go to do them are nice. One other thing to note is that in this instance with this board where it's pulled back, it's got tension against this stake so the screw fixing isn't quite so important. This one here is deflected the other way, so it's got a tendency to want to pull off. So just make sure you fix them in properly, and you might even look to put a stake on either side, if you're using thinner stakes like this, just to make sure it all holds together and doesn't pop apart a few years down the track. We've planted these citrus trees over on the far side of the yard. We've got two that will sit inside the new garden area, However, unfortunately, there's one that sits out in our new lawn area that we'll establish at a later date. What we'll probably have to do is re-space these trees around to get it working into our new landscape area. You'll also notice we've got the natural grass that was on the ground here before we built. We call it cow grass. I'm not sure exactly what it is, but it's terrible to mow over and you can't really establish it into any form of nice lawn at all. I've gone over this with some glyphosate weed killer to try to kill it all off. However, unfortunately, over the last couple of days, we've had a fair bit of rain. So it mightn't have been all that effective. But what we'll do is we'll chop all this out. We'll do some native planting in this area potentially as well, or some screening plants such as red robins or something along those lines to put along the fence line and slowly build this up over time. Now, don't think you need to do everything all at once. For us, the main objective of this little side project is to get the edging in place so that we can bring in a little bit of mulch, get rid of this old grass, 
and start preparing our side yard for some new turf, which will be another project further on down the track. Once you've got the rough shape that you want, what I do is I unclamp all the boards, I move them off to the side and I face them side down so that when you put them back, they're going back in the same curve that you've already had before and you know it's going to work. It's nothing worse than picking up the wrong piece, trying to fix it into place and it just won't go back in where you've got your stakes. Once we've got our boards off to the side, we go around with a hoe, cut out a bit of a trench and then we knock the stakes down to the height that we want, bring the boards back in, clamp them back up, make sure everything's in the right spot, screw fix them in and then move all the soil in around them just to hold them in place a little bit more. Then you can bring in your topsoil, run your turf up to it if that's what you're doing, put your mulch up to the other side or do whatever you need to do to complete that part of the project. We'll go into a quick time lapse now, we'll get all this cut out, and we'll get the boards back into place and see what it looks like. So we've roughly cut the trench to put the edging in. You'll notice the pegs I ran down just before I put the edging in, but you'll quite often uncover certain things you aren't expecting to uncover. So in our case, we've got a real low set block here. So this is our stormwater pipe, which is about 20 to 30 mil below the surface, and it runs through to an easement behind our fence. Not super critical really, but I don't want to mess it up. So what I will do is I'll just chop a notch out of the edging before I put it in. One thing to note, when you are allowing for services or roots or any obstruction that runs through past your edging, as long as you're not going to see the hole that's been cut in it, make it a little bit larger. That way you've got some wiggle room when you go to put it in. There's nothing worse than trying to get it all fitted in, particularly on these curves where it's quite tight and you're pulling it from side to side and fine, you've got to pull it back out and then all the sand, in our case, we've got fairly loose dirt, all the sand falls in and, you know, and you're pulling it backwards and forwards and then you, you need to scoop it all back out and it's a real headache. So, so I'll probably mark from here to here, keep on working. Now, when it comes to terminating the edges, we like to line it up with something so there's a little bit of sense in what you're doing. So as you can see here, this is just a standard length that runs off into the middle of nowhere. What we will do is cut this back and line it up with the center post on the fence 
So it's, it's got a junction and a meeting point, which makes a lot more sense when you view it, view it and it's all installed. several days later. Okay, it's a bit of an update. It's been a few days now. I've been busy doing my work. However, my lovely wife, Michelle, has been working very, very hard. We borrowed the neighbor's rotary hoe and we've rotary hoed up all the grass down in through here and we just got six cubes of uh, cypress pine mulch delivered so we're in the middle of pulling out all the bits of leftover grass that hasn't been mulched into the soil and turned over and putting that down the side and then we've got to spread the rest of this mulch before it rains again anyway we'll get on cracking we're going camping tomorrow so we've got to get this done today <music>
And that concludes another, what we call a school holiday capital works project. It's a few weeks later now, we've had a lot of rain and it's been quite busy, but it's turned out pretty good. So we've relocated these citrus trees out of the mowing zone and we've got this really, really nice flowing edge that we can easily mow around now and we don't have to do an Austin Powers in the backyard quite so many times where you hit the right angles and you're trying to mow and, and cut around things. What we'll do over a period of time is we'll start adding in some native grasses through here. But for now, it's just getting this area settled so we can move on to the last stage of our turf program, which is pulling out all this lumpy, bumpy, terrible grass, laying between 250 and 300 square metres of turf. At the far end, we're going to grab all, so we've got a little parking area where our trailer is currently located. The grass that I sprayed when I did this has successfully died, so that's all been killed off. And we've got a very, very major project we want to do on the side of our shed. We also have a number of things we still need to do on our Jayco Swan, including the conversion of the little narrow cupboard with the sliding uh, spice rack. We also need to install a hot water system and get an electric pump on it. I've got some hold downs for the front bed end fly when you're in transit. So all those things will be updated very, very shortly over the next coming weeks, maybe a month, and a whole heap more projects around here as we start getting into summer. We've got to get in and do a full renovation of all the established turf we've got in here. Now we've got some fantastic rain. It's a great chance to go through and do that. I'm about to go and buy some pre-emergent, so I'm going through and spray to try to control some of the paspalum and summer grass we have coming up. And from there, we we'll probably need to do a bit of a top dress as well. And then we can start getting this lawn into the perfect shape it should be. Stay tuned. There's many, many things coming up. Get out there, have fun and stay safe. Thanks for watching.